different forms of worship. There are so many methods of worship, meditation, yoga, prayer, spirituality, there are so many names to it. But what we will analyze is for all these practices and methods the same? Do they give a similar psychological experience? Does each method of practice make you a better person or lead you into a path? All of that we can carefully analyze and find out. The most basic form of worship in all religions is on the concept of God. For some religion pray to God in the form of statues, festivals, ceremonies, uh, they have a process of worship and certain faiths worship God without form, without identity, without a place, you know, or just based on conceptual facts, they pray to God. Then again, there are certain other faiths who say they don't believe in the existence of God. But they do all the similar practices with regards to concentration and spirituality in order to get to the same psychological experience which the God believers want to get. But it's just a concept of how they promote or believe in their faith differs. But the experience, more often than not, is the same, it leads to the same experience. So, how I would like to classify the concept of prayer, worship, meditation, all of that is, it starts from different layers. It's like going to school. You know, you start from LKG, then you're going to grade one, grade two, three, five, primary school, then you go to middle school, then the high school, you do the high examinations, then you go to university, you get a degree, then you proceed to a master's, then to a PhD. And the same process. Spirituality takes the same path. Basic form of worship and prayer based on conceptual stories and facts, written stuff and even pseudo-scientific stuff. That's at the base level, you know, LKG, UKG stuff. When you worship for God to help you, assist you, you're hoping, you're afraid, you ask for things, you want things to happen. All of this fall under the basic, you know, primary school stuff and that's the basic form of worship and practice, of mental training. Then when you proceed to the next levels, there you tend to dive deeper into your mind and try to understand the functioning of the mind. That's called inner travel. You travel into yourself and understand the functioning of the consciousness states, different states. You tend to value the experience derived from the practice of uttering a name of God or just following your breath or focusing on mantra repetition or focusing on the image with the eyes closed just stilling your mind or focusing on empty pitch black darkness nothingness allowing your mind to dissolve in darkness and just observing it and you can go you can there are a lot of ways of methods of mental practice in order to calm your mind and achieve insight and to become observer of yourself within and the world outside so all these practices will lead to different experiences so once you move to this middle level of trying to understand your psychological functioning a bit more and your emotional states a bit more then you have progressed in your practice 
of spirituality or mind power. Now, I'm not using this word spirituality in the sense of just following religious rules or reg regulations or, you know, you practice through fear or some conceptual stories. No. I'm looking to talk about practicing concentration, prayer, meditation with the open free mind. That it should be open to new ideas, concepts, thoughts. And you should accept your own experiences. Don't try to match your experience in what's written in a book. Because that person who has dictated his experience is different from you. His genes are different. His mind is different. I mean, like, you don't know what he's experiencing. He talks about it, but you can never experience what another person experienced. You only understand it. But for you, you have to experience it. So you have to value your experience more than what is written and taught by another person. So in short, I'm saying is you are the teacher for yourself. You are the guru for yourself. You are the master of yourself. It's not a teaching which comes from another person. And see, now we live in a world, in a society which is really, let's say, drunk in the concept of media. They want to market everything. So people following different religious faiths will market their religious founders and even die for them. You know, they will build temples here, there, worship places, you name it, you know, they do a lot of things. Start organizations, movements, collect funds, anything is possible. So that is not really looking at. No, that is a common man's thinking of how he thinks that he is been chosen by some almighty to do certain things which is very debatable but how we are going to look at it is you are the master of yourself your temple is your body and your mind and the place of your home where you live that is the most divine place for you that's the place you spend most of your life in so you should give that place more importance than any other outside temple or place of worship because you don't want a situation where you go to a place of worship and you're happy and you can get back home, you're unhappy. No, the home should be the ultimate place of worship. So, no place other than the home should bring you the greatest happiness because that is where your happiness is, at your home, with your family. So you should focus on that. And we are focusing on enjoying life, living life with your family. You have good sex, you eat good food, you have kids, you have a lovely structured united family and you go for a job you make money you do all of that so we're looking at mind power and meditation as a mental tool to bring about the best in you it's not following just some pseudoscientific concept the pseudoscience is or cannot be ignored altogether but still we are we do not know all the truths of the universe existence why life exists, why we human beings exist, why should we live a life like this? No, there's a big question marks. You know, we don't still have the answers to all of those. So we have to come up with certain preconceived beliefs, which is totally fine and okay. So everyone has their own pseudo scientific belief, but everything cannot be proven. You now my thoughts I'm experiencing. There's no equipment in science which can disprove my thoughts saying that no, you're not thought about this. So it's not possible to just go by scientific journals or some research document given by a scientist to say, okay, my belief is scientifically proven and researched. That's rubbish. So we always have to value our experiences and how we are comfortable with that experience. And if we can live a happy life with that experience, then that is the ultimate truth for that individual. For another individual, it's different. So that's the secret. No two individual spiritual experience is the same, and no two individual can say, I'm right and you're wrong. Everyone, everyone's experience or superconscious experience is unique to themselves, and they're happy with it. Now, science can say, you know, psychology can say, you know, trying to achieve superconscious is madness or is a mental illness. <laughs> that's also highly debatable. But I, well, the way I look at it is, 
Now, people going be behind money, women, sex, drugs, nightclubs, you know, are crazy thrills. And they are mentally ill as well. It's crazy. You know, if you look at one point of view, that, that makes a man crazy as well. So what is crazy, what not is crazy, science cannot decide. Only you can decide. So always keep that in mind because your reality is your mental creation. And I'll be putting up more interesting videos of discussion like this. Please do subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more intellectual discussions of this nature. Thank you.